welcome to The Head Trash Show. My name is Alexia Leachman and I'm the founder of Head Trash, home to the new and unique Head Trash Clearance Method that removes unwanted negative thoughts, feelings and emotions quickly and effectively so that you can achieve clarity, confidence and contentment in your life. My goal with this podcast is to teach you how to create some headspace by helping you to unpick what's blocking you and sharing some tips and how-tos for clearing it. Tune in every week as I share simple strategies to help you to achieve confidence and clarity in your life and business. To find out how to clear your head trash quickly and effectively using our unique method, pop over to headtrash.com to get our free download and subscribe for our free head trash clearance updates. And now for the show. Hello and welcome back to The Head Trash Show. This is me, your host, Alexia Leachman, and thank you so much for joining me today. Now, today I want to talk to you about the hidden dimensions of head trash. And the reason I want to sort of go over this and talk this through with you, because as I mentioned in last week's podcast, I was taking part in a two-day weekend workshop with Chris Milbank last weekend. And we, you know, we went over and talked about the different dimensions of head trash. And it really it occurred to me watching as everybody was listening that this is really quite something new in the world of um, mindset and human change and trying to resolve all that stuff we've got in our heads. And, and people were really kind of amazed at what we were sharing and certainly it really opened up people's minds as to why certain things that were affecting them negatively hadn't been cleared thoroughly, how they may have been trying other techniques or approaches or different types of therapies that weren't really clearing some of this stuff away and it became very apparent to those that were in the room that really you know the idea of clearing away all the dimensions of head trash that we work with within reflection repatterning and here at head trash is part of the secret why this techniques works so deeply and so effectively and I thought you know what it's probably worth going over and just really explaining that again and so that's what I want to do today now if you've signed up for our five-step process at the website so at headtrash.co.uk we've got a five-step process of clearing your head trash and it's free and you can get it from the home page just by signing up with your email and you'll get it straight away. So if you haven't got that, then you might want to head over to the website right now and go and grab your copy because what I'm about to share with you will make a heap load more sense. But also, if you have got it already, you may also have an inkling of what I'm going to share with you today. But you'll probably learn a ton more just by listening to it again, because I'm going to just talk about it from a slightly different perspective than I may have done in the past. And that's really because I've just observed how people have digested this information from doing the course that we did last weekend and feel that maybe it's worth sort of talking about it in a slightly different way. So that's what I'm going to do today. So when I talk about the hidden dimensions of head trash, what on earth am I on about? Well, what is a dimension of head trash anyway. Well, for me, when I talk about that, what I'm talking about is almost like it's a perspective or an angle. And so just to explain myself a little bit more, typically when we think about a dimension of head trash, or when we start helping, you know, other people start helping us, or we maybe read self-help books, or we undergo some kind of therapeutic technique or counselling or anything like that, Typically, the dimension of head trash that is usually explored or where we try to understand it a bit more is this one. It's the one where we're reconciling ourselves with hating something that's affecting us negatively. So, for example, let's say you're being affected by stress then you might explore why you hate stress and how it's affecting you and how that means that you end up behaving. And you might want to therefore understand it a little bit better and try and figure out how you can make peace with it and therefore help you to find ways of combating it, resolving it, changing your behaviour to deal with this negative thing that's in your life. But that is actually very, very one-sided. And to be perfectly honest, it's only dealing with a tiny, tiny part of the problem because that is just one single dimension of head trash. And really, there's a load more. And when I say there are a load more, there's actually about 20. So you can kind of already get a sense. If I say that, you know, when you're trying to clear some of this negativity out of, out of your life and you've maybe used other techniques in the past or you've maybe sought help from some 
expert practitioners that have helped you, it's very likely that they've only been exploring and using and clearing the negativity out of one single dimension. And there are 19 others that they haven't been exploring or clearing. So this might seem to indicate, or at least you go, ah, right, this is why I've still got the problem. This is why it never seems to go away. This is why I keep having to readdress the problem. So some people maybe that are familiar with tapping techniques, they might find that they're constantly tapping the same problem away and it keeps coming back. And the reason it keeps coming back is because they haven't fully cleared it from all of these 20 dimensions. And again, you know, using other techniques such as hypnosis or maybe neuro-linguistic programming, NLP, Um, then also just by using those techniques, but by exploring the other, the full dimensions that I'm going to share with you today, you can suddenly start working a lot deeper with those techniques and achieving much better results. So what am I on about and what are these other dimensions that I'm talking about? So let me go back to the one that we know and love. And that is the one where we hate something that affects us personally. So we hate the stress that we're experiencing, the the depression that we experience every now and then. We hate that too. And we want to understand it better. We want to get rid of it. But actually, what about the opposite? There's always balance that needs to be achieved. And you can't achieve balance if you're just looking at one end of the problem. So what's the other end of the problem? Well, if it's hating something that affects us personally that's negative, what about loving that thing? Now think about that for a moment. You have some people, certainly there's some people that I've worked with in the past, where they, you know, they're very happy to put their hand up and say, I hate my depression. But if you ask them to love their depression, they might find that a little bit challenging. But you know, once we sort of really probe a little bit more, there are some reasons why that depression might be serving them. They might be getting some benefit from their depression. They might find that people come round and cook them dinner. They might find that maybe some long last uh, distant relatives make the effort to come and visit. And if they weren't ill, they probably wouldn't visit. They might find that they've got the perfect excuse to stay at home and they don't have to make the effort to come up with things that they need to do and go out the house and deal with other people that they don't know, which they might find quite challenging. And so, even though some of these ideas might sound a little bit controversial, there are going to be deep down some reasons that they might actually love it. And so rather than ignore those reasons and push them aside, acknowledge them, make peace with them, reconcile them, balance the love and the hate that you have for something that's affecting you on a personal level, because that's really, really important. So um, for those of you that have been following this podcast, you'll know that We're a big fan of opposites. Reflective repatterning, the technique that's our favourite tool of choice, is all about the law of opposites and uses the law of opposites to create balance and neutrality. And so you might find a little bit of a theme going on with these dimensions I'm going to share with you. And yes, it's all about loving and hating a particular dimension. So even though I've spoken about 20 dimensions in the past, what I'm actually talking about is the love and hate aspect of five dimensions. And for those of you that are quick off the mark going, hang on a minute, she's just said love and hate of five dimensions, but talked about 20 dimensions. And it's like, ah, ha, 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 I'm not making this mistake here. Just stick with me till the end and I will all, I will explain everything. So back to the dimensions that I was talking about. So the first one really is the love and hate and balancing that in you experiencing something personally. And we call that within, the within dimension. Now, but let's just take a step back a minute before, you know, actually there's the very idea of what it is that you're talking about, the issue itself. So, for example, when we're talking about something like depression, then, you know, you might read about depression in the paper and suddenly just reading about it could just bring a load, you know, it might just bring you down. Just seeing the word in print might just affect you really negatively. I know that when I had a really irrational fear of childbirth, I would just read about childbirth in the paper or see a book on a shelf about childbirth and immediately I would feel the fear rising within my body. Now that wasn't me experiencing the childbirth in that moment and it wasn't me, I hadn't experienced it before, it was just a fear. However, the very idea of it really, really freaked me out and got me very tense and very scared. And I couldn't, you know, sometimes I would burst out crying just reading about childbirth. So that's why it's very important for us to reconcile the idea of something that maybe affects us negatively. So the idea of stress, the idea of depression, the idea of maybe 
having needle injections, the idea of childbirth, the idea of frustration, whatever it is that affects us in a negative way, we can think about it in a way that isn't affecting anybody personally, just the very idea of it. And again, it's loving and hating that very thing without it actually doing anything to anyone, the idea of it. So that's the second dimension, the idea of something, the idea of your head trash. Now, the third dimension that I'm going to talk about is one that is when it affects other people. So let me just invite you to imagine for a moment that you're standing in a queue, maybe in a supermarket or waiting to be served in a pub or that kind of environment. And you're observing maybe the people in front of you or people next to you getting really, really rude with a member of staff. And it's got nothing to do with you whatsoever, but you kind of can feel in you getting slightly wound up, slightly angry, just feeling a little bit like you want to maybe butt in, say your piece because you're getting affected just by hearing and observing other people behaving rudely. And you might even get sucked into behaving rudely yourself and and before you know it, you're getting involved and it was nothing to do with you. So you can see that just by observing other people on their own, minding their own business, doing something can start to bring something out in you that was already there. It was there all the time and it's just brought it to the surface. So acknowledging and making peace with other people being affected by this head trash, whatever it is that that affects you in that way, we need to make peace with that as well. And we need to love and hate other people having the head trash or being affected by the head trash. So that is dimension number three, other people. Now, the final two dimensions are combinations or they use the others because we're in a we're in a social world, we're in a connected world where we experience life with other people. We talk to other people, we communicate with them, we work with them, we live with them, we love them. They're in our families, they're our friends. So it's impossible for us to go through life without interacting with other people. And so that's where the final two dimensions I'm going to talk about come into play when it comes to you and your head trash. And so the next one is when other people are making you experience the head trash. So you're experiencing stress, you're experiencing frustration or guilt or whatever it is that you're going through because of somebody else or a situation. So it's not, you know, you you, you almost feel like you want to blame then. You can maybe, maybe sort of give yourself the excuse that it's not your fault. You can take, you know, it's not your responsibility and somebody else is making you feel this. But nevertheless, you might feel powerless in that moment. You know, you're being stressed out by somebody else who's maybe imposing deadlines on you or whatever it is. You're the one that experiences your head trash because of somebody else or a situation. And that happens to us all the time. That feeling that we're going through something because of somebody else or something else. And therefore, we need to make peace with that too. And we need to love that and we need to hate that. And when we can neutralise the effect of being inflicted that on by other people or in a situation, that can create a lot of, that can lighten the load when it comes to dealing with our head trash and clearing it away on a more permanent basis. So I guess you can figure out what the final dimension is. And that is when we inflict things on others. Now, you know, you might cause other people stress by you imposing deadlines on them, shouting at them, or doing whatever it is that you do. You might not even know that you're stressing them out. You might find out later you know, or maybe you're doing it deliberately, knowing that you're deliberately stressing somebody else out. And then you later think, oh my God, then you get stressed by your own behaviour. But you just couldn't help yourself in the moment. You know, you maybe you just blew your lid, you stress them out, and then you go off and you beat yourself up in a corner because of your own, because of what you did, because you couldn't uh, maintain control of that moment. So you see, because we interact with others, because we are affected by those around us and the situations and, and life itself goes on, There are all these other ways that this particular head trash, this idea of whatever it is that affects us negatively, can affect us. So when you think about going back to what the first dimension is that I talked about, the one that we generally tend to work on and focus on when it comes to helping ourselves and clearing anything negative out of our lives, we tend to just focus on when something negative affects us personally. And we just make peace with that aspect. And so you see, I've already shared now the the full 10 dimensions that things, that ways that can affect you that haven't fully been explored. 
Now, those of you that remember at the beginning of this, I said there are 20 and I wasn't making a mistake because the thing is, is because we're talking about opposites here. So let's say that you've managed to make peace and neutralize that excessive emotional energy that you might experience around stress, for example. The work isn't fully cleared until you've done exactly the same with the opposite of stress. Because some people, let's say, what would be the opposite of stress for you? Maybe it's joy or maybe it's happiness or calmness and it's going to be different for everybody but for some people there may be a lot of resistance around being calm or being happy or being joyful and they might find it very challenging to be a happy person they might have a a lot of excuses well no I can't be happy because my dog died last week and my other half walked out of me and I've just lost my job so I can't be happy impossible well you see there's a lot of resistance there for somebody being happy because actually you can be happy anyway, no matter what's happening to you. It's a state of being. It's not necessarily linked to what's going on in your environment. It's who you are. And yet some people have enormous resistance around experiencing the positive things in life. They're enormously resistant to joy, to happiness and to being calm. And so until you can neutralise the opposite as well, i.e. the other end of whatever is affecting you negatively, you will never truly clear away whatever it is out of your life. And so suddenly where we were, you know, traditionally a lot of traditional therapies and techniques that have been working on clearing away this negativity have been working on that single dimension that I highlighted at the beginning, hating something that affects us personally. There are all those other aspects to to a problem or to an issue that still need to be cleared. And it's only when you really clear on all of those levels are you really going to experience a real and true deep change and shift in how you experience the world and how things affect you going forward. And when you've cleared them on all those 20 dimensions, you will, it's very unlikely that you will ever have to do that clearance work ever again. So if you're listening to this and you are trained in maybe a tapping technique or NLP or hypnosis, you can use these dimensions in the work that you do by using those techniques, by applying them to the dimensions that I've just talked about. But obviously, if you want to use a very quick, clear technique that I that works brilliantly, now obviously I'm going to say this, <coughs> use reflective repatterning because it really does work quicker. It's much more simple and elegant to use. And once you start using that, you find that those other techniques do feel a little bit clunky and a bit long-winded. So um, you might end up diverting and, and choosing as I have done. But obviously I would say that because I'm a massive, massive fan. Um, so Yeah, so if you are somebody that does use other techniques, then do consider using these other dimensions and working with your clients in that way. But if if you're somebody that just wants help and you need help clearing your stuff, then even if you just start thinking consciously about how you're thinking and how you're relating to all these other dimensions and the way that whatever it is that's affecting you is, just thinking them in those terms can really start to help you to move through and move past your issues and, and challenges in life because it really does open up new ways of thinking and new perspectives once you uncover them and really start exploring them and clearing them fully. So I hope that this podcast has been useful. I hope that uh, it's given you new ways of thinking and new perspectives on the problems and challenges and issues that you're facing in your life and maybe a little bit more understanding of why we do explore all those dimensions using the technique that we share with you happily on our homepage. So again, if you haven't got that technique, then just go to the homepage at headtrash.co.uk and download our five-step process and you'll see that the 10 dimensions of head trash are explained within that. You will get a video coming through to you on the emails that you sign up for to help you understand it a lot more clearly. Obviously, you can listen to this podcast again and get a deeper understanding of it by hearing me explain it maybe another time round. So I hope that that's been useful for you. If you have any questions whatsoever, you know where I am. Email me at hello at headtrash.co.uk and I'm happy to answer your questions. And equally, don't forget, if you want help unpicking some of your head trash, then just email me, let me know, and we can do that here on the podcast. I've had some emails from people. I've got some little chats lined up soon where people have said, yeah, look, I'm happy for you to help unpick my stuff 
on a Skype call and then for you to play that on the podcast so that other people get to benefit from hearing how you're helping me because obviously people's problems are not unique. We all share very common problems and challenges in life and just because you're experiencing it doesn't mean you're alone and by, you know, if I can get the chance to maybe help you unpick your stuff, then that can potentially help somebody else who's going through something similar. So if you would like my help in unpicking what's going on for you and giving you a nice clear head trash clearance to do list of stuff that you need to clear that you can work on in your own time at your own pace then do get in touch with me here at the show um, thank you once again for listening to me and subscribe if you want to to the podcast using stitcher if you've got an android phone or on itunes if you've got an iphone and then you will get the episodes coming straight to your phone every week and that is obviously the best way to do it rather than keeping going to our website you might forget and all that kind of stuff so subscribe at stitcher or at itunes and until next time have a great week bye you've just been listening to alexia leachman here on the head trash show if you enjoyed the show i'd really appreciate you leaving a review here on itunes and don't forget to pop over to headtrash.com to get your copy of our free five steps to clearing head trash guide now stay tuned for upcoming episodes and more tips and how-tos for clearing your head trash and reclaiming your headspace. Until next time, bye for now.